Hello, my name is Tom Alpel, and welcome to the Art of Nothing Wilderness Survival video series. Hi, I'm Felicia Alpel. We're going to show you how to survive without anything but the clothes you have on. We're on the banks of the Jefferson River here in southwest Montana. And for the most part, this is a pretty clean river. But like any place that gets a lot of use, there's uh, always a little bit of litter left behind. And in this case, uh, we found some bottles here, some uh, Snapple bottles, and uh, oh, ocean spray. This is known as the tree mushroom. It is also called the oyster mushroom because some people think it tastes like oysters. All right, you can see these a uh, little bit younger, look a little bit different. Still the same uh, mushroom and uh, nice and tender. Uh, these will make a really nice meal. Because we didn't bring a knife, we're going to improvise by making a stone one, and this rocky beach looks like a great place. Now to make a good stone knife, you want to find the, the densest, most tightly grained rock that you can. And I especially like these uh, black, uh, kind of basalt-like ro like rocks, uh, make really good knives. So let's go ahead and make one. You need to find a good rock, and then uh, look for another stone to hit it on and uh, just hit it just right. Hey, that looks good. It looks really good. Pass that over. That's my knife, Dad. Okay. And here you can see the knife uh, we just made and it's got a really nice sharp edge on there. One of our most important needs out here is fire. Uh, we can use fire to make sure we have a warm shelter for the night. Uh, we use fire to uh, boil our water so that it's safe to drink. And uh, fire to cook our food. So that's a real priority that we need to get started on right away. And the method we're going to use today is called the bow and drill. Now let me give you a quick peek ahead at uh, how this works. We'll need four parts. We'll need a fireboard and a drill or spindle a socket to apply pressure from the top, and a bow to turn the spindle. The friction between the fireboard and the drill creates wood powder, wood punk, that spills out into the notch. And as this gets hot, it ignites to form a small ember, and we'll transfer that into a nest of soft, dry, fluffy material called a tender bundle, and then we'll blow that into flame. This one's boiled for several minutes now. We can go ahead and take it off and let it cool. While we're waiting for our tea to cool, we need to get started working on our shelters so that we'll sleep warm and comfortable tonight. Now I've outlined a couple of trenches on the ground here, and we'll use sticks as tools to dig these holes. I used a dry juniper bough as a torch to transfer the fire from our main fire pit into our hot coal beds. Then we walked over to the water's edge to pick some dry grass to use for bedding. Cattail roots are packed with starch, and all you have to do is dig them up, wash them a little bit in the river, and throw them on the hot coals to cook. When the roots are charred nice and black, you just peel off the outside to reveal the starchy white core in the middle. This core has a lot of fibers running through it, but you just pop it in your mouth, chew it up to get out the starch, and when you're done, you spit out the little wad of fibers. After dinner, it was time to finish the shelter. I crushed the big coals with a log and moved the last few burning sticks to our cooking fire. I usually burn a hot coal bed for one to two hours, but since there was quite a bit of moisture in the soil here from a recent rain, 
We burned these probably three to four hours. Then we buried the hot coals with the original sand and gravel we dug out of the trenches. We let the moisture steam out of the ground for a few minutes and checked for any remaining hot coals, then rolled the logs into place and filled our bed with the insulating grass. I knew that Felicia would be out of sorts hiking around on an empty stomach, so I decided to let her sleep in while I went hunting and gathering. I was on my way out of camp just when the bear came through. That was really cool. This is a young milkweed plant. It will make a delicious spring green. But be sure to use my book, Botany in a Day, for more thorough coverage of plant identification and uses. I'll gather a few of these to take back to camp and cook. And look, there's a porcupine. I'd better get Felicia. Getting to the porcupine proved to be a real challenge so it took us an hour to spear it and kill it. Hunting, killing, and butchering can be a bit of a shock if you've always bought your meat shrink-wrapped at the store. Someone else does all the dirty work, and you can eat it all your life without realizing that a living being had to die to fill your belly. I think that when you do your own killing, you face the reality of our existence, and you learn to appreciate life that much more. Not bad. 